So these are more results from Johnson & Johnson's phase 1-2 study. So more results on the antibody levels that this vaccine generates. It is not yet the highly anticipated phase 3 efficacy study, but those are due within weeks. These results, though, Mel, give us a reassuring look at what those efficacy results are likely to look like. So this is the shot. That's just one dose. This is what they're testing here. Uh, that would be a real game changer. And what they found in this phase 1-2 study is that after a single shot, 90% of people uh, got neutral antibodies by day 29. That was up to 100% after two months and then stable out to day 71. Encouragingly, those levels were similar to what was seen with the mRNA vaccines. So you could think that that bodes well for the efficacy. It was the same across age groups if you were over 65 or under, which is also reassuring. Uh, they did see side effects that you see sometimes like fatigue, uh, headache, injection, pain, and fever. Now, Dr. Paul Stoffels, I talked with him from Johnson & Johnson. He said, if antibodies are the driver, then we should see a high level of efficacy. And Mel, another important thing about this vaccine, other than the single dose and what looks like uh, high antibody levels, um, is how easy it is to store and ship. They can store it at minus four degrees Fahrenheit long term, and they can store it for up to three months at 36 to 46, which is a regular fridge temperature. Uh, so this is a vaccine that is thought to be hopefully a game changer, and we should be seeing those efficacy results uh, within a few weeks. Melissa? All right, Meg, and we are seeing the stock climb in the after-hour session now up 3%. Meg Terrell with the details, the latest on J&J's 1-2 uh, phase results. Uh, Guy Dami, we have, we have talked about these COVID Hi. vaccine treatments. We see the stock react, so what's your initial reaction to this? There are a lot of reasons to own J&J. &J. I mean, this is one of them. I don't think it's the main one, though, and I think the guys would probably agree. I think all the bad news is behind them, valuation-wise, trading at 17 and a half times next year's numbers, which in my opinion is cheap. They have three very distinct businesses. Half of their revenue comes from pharmaceutical. The other half between medical devices and consumer products. It's a well-constructed company. I mean, this is sort of the kicker. This is the tailwind, but this isn't the sole reason. I think you can own Johnson & Johnson for a myriad of reasons, including valuation, and I think just this helps that argument a little bit more. The gain is approaching 4% after hours, knowing that in a few short weeks we will get phase three data. Pete, is this one that you would play either through the stock itself or through options? Well, you know, I love the stock, and, and Guy just laid out exactly why I think we all probably would like this stock, because of what they do and the value that they have in three different uh, aspects of their businesses. I think that really does point something out that you're not just getting pharma, you're getting a consumer and you're getting uh, the, the medical devices unit. And all of that, I think, is great. So I, I think it's a quality company. Absolutely. But am I, am I buying J&J &J right now because of the vaccine? I absolutely would not be buying for that reason. I just would be buying because I think they're a quality company that just does so many things right. And they've had a few missteps here and there, but very few. And, I, you know, right now I own Pfizer. I own Merck. I own a couple others. I got Gilead and a few other names out there. I probably should be in J&J. &J. I like this name, but I don't own it right now. And this is not the reason, in my opinion, to buy the stock. I mean, if one wanted to be in Big Cap Farmer, is J&J the place, Steve? Yeah, I think it's as good a place as, as any place. I'm long uh, Pfizer. I've been long Pfizer forever. And when you look at the chart, Pfizer and Moderna both had a huge run up because of the vaccine. And I think J&J &J will be due that huge run up as well. So I would be a buyer of J&J &J right here, right now, right on this news. But remember, Pfizer and Moderna both pulled back dramatically. So get in, ride the pop, and then leave the stock. Yeah. Is there a further pop, you think, Tim, if, if phase three is favorable? Do we see another pop here? I, th I think it's a catalyst that, that then highlights also just the other parts of the business. So what Steve's saying, I, I think, then highlights what Guy and Pete were saying. You know, look, they're, they're pharma business, and it's been guided to be above average market growth and, and a better driver. Their oncology pursuits, uh, momenta acquisition, I think, are very, very bullish. Uh, medical devices business will begin to normalize in 2021. Their consumer products business is rock solid and gotten through some difficult times uh, on talc and other things. So um, is this a catalyst that unlocks some value for a lot of people that I think are mostly neutral on this name? And, and largely, that's been the right call. But yes, I, I think you can stay here, and I think you can get something out of this. We've been having this narrow pharma conversation, one primarily focused, no surprise, on Johnson & Johnson. But, of course, this has much broader implications for the economy and for the reopening trade in general. If one is to believe that there's uh, much, uh, it's e much easier 
to distribute. It's much easier to manufacture in that you need one single dose instead of two doses uh, to achieve efficacy, Pete. I would think that you might feel a little bit better about the economy reopening and regaining of some of the ground it's lost. Absolutely. And, and I'm definitely in that camp, Mel. I think we we're getting over. There's been a lot of different humps that we've had to get over. And obviously, as we've gone through the, the entire year of 2020, all, all the, uh, the the pressure to get out a vaccine as fast as possible. That's also safe. And I think that we've started to get ourselves into a position now where we can look ahead and we can say, you know what? There's enough out there. The distribution problems, I think they'll get over that as well. And I think that bodes really well for a lot of the different parts of the economy that haven't been able to open up just yet. But I think that will happen. It might still take, obviously, a quarter or two, probably two quarters before we get that comfortable. But I, I, I like what's happening right now. And clearly, uh, hats off to all of these various companies that have done such a magnificent job as far as the speed at which they have worked to make sure that we can get these vaccines out as fast as possible. It's absolutely amazing. I followed pharma for a lot of years, Mel. And I'll tell you what, the speed at which we have moved in this particular case has been extraordinary. And by the way, the J&J &J CEO had said previously that the company is on track uh, for a billion vaccine doses by the end of this year. So that's how fast this vaccine could get out to the general population. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.